We're going to be sharing the case of a council flat dweller who was left without hot water for months on end, apparently because of a serious backlog from Giza suppliers. We wanted to find out how bad the situation really is and also why it took literally weeks and weeks of phone calls and emails and visits to council offices to finally get John's new Giza installed. If you have been paying, you are paying rent as a tenant of a flat or a house, you should be entitled to a working Giza, right? That seems to be a pretty basic requirement, yet scores of City of Cape Town council flat tenants have been having to bathe with water heated in pots on stoves or shower at the homes of friends and family members for months, thanks to what the city has called, as Pippa said, a huge backlog in the supply of replacement geezers. It's a particularly ghastly scenario now that Cape Town appears to have leapfrogged straight into winter. Yeah. So among them is John Ferreira, who brought his story to Cape Talk, Pippa in particular. And I think since you put on, did so much legwork on this one, Pippa, won't you just summarise how it went um, with your correspondence with both John and the city about this? Sure, sure. Thanks, Wendy. So John is a resident of the Parrow Park Municipal Flats, and he lives there with his wife and his two young children, ages, I think, two and seven. And he wrote in to say both himself and his neighbours in the block are really, really struggling because of this geezer problem. But he was really frustrated because he said despite numerous visits to the council offices, phone calls, emails to multiple parties, nobody could seem to tell them when the geezer was going to be fixed or replaced. So this had been happening since January already. In early March, John got a response from the city's area coordinator for public housing, Glenville Williams, who mailed him back at last to say, we're sorry, we are experiencing huge challenges due to high demand for geezers in all areas. A new geezer will be installed as soon as it's practically possible, and we apologize for any inconvenience caused, read the email. But there was no commitment to any kind of timeline for those repairs. And that was early March. By the end of that month, when he still hadn't heard anything further, that was when John reached out to us for help. So on the 29th of March, I sent an email to the city asking uh, for more information on this supposed geezer backlog. And we finally got a written response after the Easter weekend, one that wasn't very satisfactory, I'm afraid to say. They would not or could not tell us how many council residents were on that waiting list for new geezers. They only said, we're doing our best to work through severe backlogs as quickly as possible. When I asked what had caused such a backlog, the response was that the supplier was experiencing huge shock, stock shortages because of breakdowns in their production lines at the end of last year, as well as the annual December shutdown, which is required by unions. They could not or would not answer my question about the average turnaround time between reporting an issue like this and getting it repaired. They could not commit to an estimate on the timeline for John's particular job. So all in all, a very broad and not detailed response in writing from the city. And very frustratingly, our inquiry just did nothing to move John's case at all. So... Another month goes by, end of April, John sends off another flurry of emails to various parties in the city and the province, begging for someone please to give him feedback on what was happening. And it was at that point that I briefed Wendy into the case, wondering if perhaps, A, she might get more traction from the city than I did, and B, whether there was a bigger consumer issue here that needed some airing. Because bearing in mind, John is not the only one facing this problem. And it was getting colder, and the nights are getting longer and darker, and the thought of a family sitting with no hot water as we headed into winter was one we could not sit with. Um, so last Wednesday, again, I reached out to the city asking if they could supply someone to join us on air to discuss this issue and answer questions about the geezer shortage that they're calling, uh, that they're reporting. Wendy, I know you asked them too, but they don't seem interested in being able to have that conversation on air, do they? No, certainly not on air. I did get a response um, just this morning, which we'll share in a bit. But yes, I also, on Friday, because of course Thursday was the holiday, no one would have been around to receive it. I put in a request for a spokesperson to join us on air so that we could interrogate this properly. Um, but uh, they didn't answer that one. And when I went back this morning to say, so no spokesperson, they said no. Uh, we all you have from us is the written response and that was that so okay so all we've got for now is the written responses yep. to engage with let's take a look at what they said Wendy firstly you asked them to please name the supplier who was experiencing this big backlog so that you could ask them for some f further information they wouldn't do that would they no, um, they didn't. They they just um, said that they have um, a number of uh, 
attended suppliers and and that was that. Um, I know you also pushed back on that question. I mean, I asked them directly how many people are affected and they could not or would not give us figures. You felt that was remiss, Wendy, and I know you pushed back on it. Did you I get did. any further? I said it was in the public interest to know how many council flat residents are currently without hot water due to the Giza supply backlog. Um, I said if the figures are indeed not available, as they said to city officials, that would indicate that the city is not monitoring the situation yeah. and that's not on top of a plan to remedy it. That did get a response, <laughs> which was since the 1st of July 2019, a total of 2,461 Giza-related notifications have been registered in the city's central region. Of these, 1,770 have been completed. Leaving me to do some maths, which yeah. is always a bit of a dangerous thing, <laughs> but I got to... Just under 700, 670, sorry, 691 requests for geyser replacements have not been attended to. 691, that's nearly and 700 people sitting with cold yeah, water. Only. And we don't know, I mean, they're leaving the interpretation to be that some of them might have been waiting since July 2019 because they haven't really given Yeah, there's no indication of, of, of how, <laughs> how far that is. Let's hope data. not. Yeah. Let's hope not. Okay, now, Wendy, the other big question for me was around this the supply agreement because, okay, we understand tenders go out, contracts are signed, and you are locked into working with a particular supplier. But surely if that supplier is unable to deliver on the contract, which they are saying is the current case, Make there should plan. be a mechanism to allow you to look elsewhere. And we're for not hearing reports that nobody has geezers. No, not at all. Um when I said I, I, in my in my query, I said uh, we understand the tender process and you're locked in with one supplier. The answer was the city manages stock requirements as part of its contract management process. A number of suppliers have tenders with the city. I don't know if they mean for geezers or generally. Obviously, it would be a number, but it yeah. was a little bit um, vague. vague. Um, so I was f- curious as to whether this geezer, uh, chronic geezer, a supply problem backlog um, was indeed a thing. Um, you know, as you know, I have a background in KZN and lots of contacts there. So yeah. I went to a major uh, plumber of great repute there and I, s- I ran this past him and he said, what? Tim, I'm hugely surprised to hear that. He says, no supply issues with Electrolux, which was formerly Quick Hot, a major geezer supplier, or Ariston, again, another major supplier. So I asked, uh, the city about this and uh, to elaborate on the, on the, the, the so-called huge backlog and all I got was that particular type of geezer in other words the one that that John and others a council flat residents I would assume that particular type of geezer arrived at the stores last week Mr. Ferreira's new geezer will be installed on the 3rd of May in other words today we apologize for any inconvenience caused to every service provider everywhere Okay, so so again, I mean, it's very frustrating to me, Wendy. So no no indication of you know if there is a particular geezer brand that you cannot get supply of, surely you should be looking at alternatives. Okay, but anyway, the promise of the third of May installation for Mr. Ferreira. The good news is at least that promise has finally been it, kept. Wendy, it has. When I chatted to John this morning, um, he said he would believe it when he saw it, which is totally understandable yeah, because him. his family has been struggling. Uh, for more than four months with no hot water from a geezer. So boiling water, he he went into some length, boiling water on the gas stove um, and, you know, tending to the children's needs first and then theirs and then on occasion driving to his father-in-law's house to shower. It's Um, just four four months. I mean, come on. But the good news, as you say, is shortly before noon, noon, he sent me a number of photos of the installation underway with his huge thanks to both of us. And Wendy, he's emailed as well to say thank you, thank you. The geezer is going in as we speak. So it's it's resolved in John's case. But Wendy, what bothers me here is the 691 other people sitting on that waiting list and when they are going to get answers. Um, I wonder if anybody else listening is on that list, has also experienced difficulties in getting a geezer replaced, whether you're in a council flat or some other property. Uh, And if anybody has been through the process of replacing a geezer of late, I'd be very interested to know how long it took from your point of order to getting it installed. Did you experience any kind of delays or stock shortages or were you able to turn it around pretty quickly? I would really value any insight here. A voice note to 072-567-1567. Very frustrating engagement with the city on this one, Wendy. I can't understand why they could not supply somebody to engage on this issue because if there is a genuine 
out of their hands, out of their control backlog. Everyone would understand. Why not be forthright about it? Why not just come out and say, this is what's happening. This is the particular supplier. We locked into a deal with them or the alternative brands are much more expensive and it's not cost effective. Whatever the reason is, be accountable to the people that are waiting for answers. And in this case, nearly four months is not okay. At the very least, I think John deserved the courtesy of an answer to those emails and phone calls and visits, the time wasted, the petrol money wasted, driving to the office to ask what's going on, when can I expect it? At the very least, he should have had the dignity of a, of a response and from the city. It's very, very poor communication. Very poor. And he's, we, in our long chat this morning, he said, you know, there were a number of other maintenance issues. There used to be caretakers at the blocks and now they're outsourced handymen and everything. Um, and Yes, those are problematic. But he said the skeezer issue is obviously the most important, not being able to have hot water, water in your yeah. house. I mean, just washing the dishes, showering, it's just, for, for as you say, these things happen. There are delays. Um, there are council flats. But, you know, for months? No, four months. Not, and and not four okay. months with not so much as a Drop. phone call to say. Oh, all that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're aware. We're sorry. We recognize it's taking too long. Uh, somebody anonymous saying, unless it is a particularly special kind of geezer, there is no shortage of the standard 150 litre geezers at present. Um, okay. Chris says, of the people on the waiting list, how many are in arrears for rental or services? I stay in a rental and if you are behind, no repairs. And I must say, I agree with that policy. Chris, that was one of the things we wanted to ask the city about but again they would not supply a person to speak to us about it so we were not able to to do so somebody asking isn't hot water something you can legitimately withhold rent for oh where's marlon chevalier when we need him, our rental expert but um, i don't think it is i don't think it is in terms of the rental housing act i don't think you can as a as a landlord go in and um uh, I know you can't do it that way. A landlord cannot withhold access no, to, to the property services. or to services in lieu of rent not paid. I think this is meaning the other way around. If, you're, if your landlord is not supplying hot water, the question is, are you entitled to withhold rent? Oh, no, that, that never ends well. <laughs> that yeah. never ends well. Okay. Um, all right. So Jan, somebody saying quick hot geezers were in short supply in January, but it was resolved in late January. Another comment saying, surely council housing geezers should be replaced with solar water heaters. It sounds like a wasted opportunity to install another electrical geezer, which costs too much to run and is just about guaranteed to have to be replaced again in a couple of years. I don't know how uh, that would solar work. Solar water heaters last for much longer and come with backup for at least 10 years. In a huge block of flat. How do you? How how, what, how, yeah. roofs, how how much roof space do you need? You would literally need one allocated per unit. Uh, I would guess to be able to sustain that, and even then, I don't think okay. it would work logistically. Again, Maybe it would have somebody been very nice game. to be able to discuss that with a city official as to what the specs are that they've considered. But um, yeah. Unfortunately, that was not possible. So, look, uh, we hope for the sake of the other 690 on the waiting list that the, the the cork has been removed from the bottle, as it were, Wendy. Absolutely. Well, to be continued, I hope. I hope so. If we get some feedback from others. I just wanted to say on the subject of, of geezers, um, if you have a geezer burst, um, and just first check um, before calling your plumber that the geezer is not under um, warranty. Because a lot of the time they will just, um, well, I had someone who uh, who lodged a, a, a claim. Let me just get this right. She called her own plumber when her, she needed to replace her, um, her geezer and found out that the one allocated by insurance company couldn't do the necessary work to fix the cupboard that had been damaged when the other one burst. When she lodged a claim, the insurer rejected it because the geezer was under warranty. When she checked with her plumber, he said that they never check whether a geezer is under oh. warranty or not. So you, she could have saved herself an awful lot of problem and uh, money. Mm -hmm. And the other thing to remember is if your geezer is replaced, it doesn't come with the full during its five-year warranty period, the general yeah. five years. It doesn't come with a new five-year warranty. It inherits the balance of the um, original geezer. That's, this is a complaint I get often that people yep. think that they're being shortchanged and that's the way it works because your spend on that geezer covered you for five years of use and that's all they pro pro they require to provide you so you don't get another you don't get a bonus you don't reset years. the clock yes exactly okay thanks for that reminder wendy an important one lunch with pippa hudson on cape talk